Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we will be looking into perceptron training rule. Till now, we have seen how perceptron works as well as we have seen the geometrical intuition behind perceptron. But in this particular video, we will be looking into how does perceptron algorithm changes weights when it encounters misclassifications in the data. If you haven't watched the previous video on perceptron as well as the geometrical intuition behind it, then I would strongly recommend you to first go and watch that video and then come back to this particular video. If you can have a look at those videos in the deep learning playlist on my channel. So let's see how perceptron changes weights. Now this fact must be clear that perceptron only changes its weights whenever it encounters any misclassification in the data set. And once it encounters, it has to add. That means it has to make the old weight correct by doing some manipulations in that particular weight. So that manipulation is nothing but a factor which is called by delta W. You can see you can get the new weight by simply adding the delta W that is nothing but the change to the older weight that is W old. Now what exactly is this delta W? Let's see. So delta w is represented as neta that is a greek letter multiplied by y minus y hat multiplied by x now there are a lot of unfamiliar terms that are introduced in this particular expression let's see what exactly they are called as so you can see that neta is nothing but the learning rate we will see the significance of learning rate in a while now y over here is nothing but the actual output and y hat over here is nothing but the predicted output. x is the feature input that we have already seen in the examples that was taken in the previous videos. So I hope the name of each and every term is clear to you all. Previously I have shown you that w new equals to w old plus delta w. Instead of delta w we can simply write this particular expression which represents delta w. Now let's try to look at the significance of each and every term in this particular equation starting with w old. Let's say we have the old classifier equation as 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 4 equals to 0. Where 2 and 3 are the weights that are associated with the variables and 4 is the bias weight. x1 and x2 are the feature input. So from this you can clearly see that the old weights are nothing but w1, w2 and w0 where w1 is the weight associated with the x1 feature input, w2 is the weight associated with the x2 feature input and 4 is the bias weight associated with the bias term which is nothing but x0 whose value is always initiated to 1 and that is why w1 equals to 2, w2 equals to 3 and w0 equals to 4. So these are the old weights. Now let's have a look at the significance of the term neta which is nothing but the learning rate. So this learning rate is nothing but a hyperparameter that affects the convergence of a model during training. Now model convergence is nothing but a point after which even if you provide more training to that particular model it won't improve. So this hyperparameter neta will affect that model convergence while training the model. Neta is nothing but a numerical value. If the value is large enough, then the model training will occur at a faster rate. Now if the model training is occurring at a faster rate, then there are a lot of chances that the model will skip some of the important features which ultimately can lead to instability. Hence the model won't learn properly and then it won't be able to tackle unseen scenarios with good accuracy and that is why you should not initiate the neta value larger than a particular threshold. Now what if the learning rate is small? In that particular scenario the model will learn at a slower rate and since it is learning slowly it won't skip any important feature instead it will learn all the intricate features also. So this stabilizes the training but if the learning rate is extremely smaller, then the model convergence will be really very slow. 
so you must choose an optimal value for the learning rate it must not be very high also it must not be very low you should choose an optimal value and it ranges from 0.1 to 0.001 so this is what a learning rate is i hope it is clear now let's move on to the next term which is y and y hat now let's say according to the old weights that means according to the old classifier the model predicted that the output is tropical which is represented with the label 1 but in reality the output has to be balanced whose label is 0 that means this is a misclassification according to the feature orientation the model has to predict the value to be 0 but it has predicted the value as 1 so in this particular case the actual output is 0 and the predicted output is 1 therefore y value is 0 because it represents the actual output and y hat value is 1 because it represents the predicted output so i hope the significance of y and y hat is clear to you all y is the actual output and y hat is the predicted output now let's move on to the next term which is x we have already seen x represents the features now we can have multiple features for example x1 x2 x3 and so on so which feature we have to write it in place of x let's say if we want to update the weight w1 then instead of x we need to write the variable of that weight which is x1 so x will be replaced by x1 if we are updating the weight w2 then x will be replaced by x2 i hope it is clear to you all now we will be taking an example which will clear all your doubts and we will see how this particular expression will be helpful to find out the new weights from the older ones so let's say we have this particular scenario that is given to us and the scenario says that we need to consider misclassification for the data point 32,80 basically this is the features 32 is the x1 feature and 80 is the x2 feature when the weights are given to us w1 equals to 2 w2 equals to 3 and w0 equals to 4 i hope you remember that w0 is the bias weight now here it says that the actual output is supposed to be 0 that means the model must predict the actual output as 0 but according to the older classifier according to these weights the model has predicted the output to be 1 hence this is a misclassification now we need to update the weights so for that we'll write the given information as i have already said that 32 comma 80 is the feature input x1 is 32 and x2 is 80 weights are already given and we also know that y equals to 0 because it is the actual output and y hat equals to 1 because it is the predicted output we know that new weights can be calculated with this particular formula that is w old plus neta into y minus y hat multiplied by x so let's start we have three weights to update that is w1 w0 and w2 so let's start with w1 as we know that we have this particular formula w new equals to w old plus neta into y minus y hat multiplied by x as we know that we are talking about w1 so instead of writing w new and w old we can write w1 new and w1 old plus neta into y minus y hat will remain as it is and this x variable will turn into x1 because we are talking about the weight w1 now let's fill all the values here we have taken the neta value that is the learning rate value as 0.01 w1 old is given as 2 y is 0 and y hat is 1 we know that x1 value is 32 now we have filled all the values and you can see the expression boils down to 2 multiplied by 0.01 multiplied by minus 32 again it boils down to 2 minus 0.32 and when you subtract 0.32 from 2 you will get 1.68 as the w1 new value so this is how we can calculate the new weights from the older ones similarly we have to calculate the new value for w2 as well as for w0 so let's try to go for w2 now we need to perform the same things the only thing that is changing over here is that instead of w1 we'll write w2 so the formula changes like this remember since we are talking about w2 
here instead of x we'll write x2 so let's fill all the values note one thing that the learning rate has to be same throughout all the iterations now let's try to calculate the value of this expression this expression when calculated it boils down to 3 minus 0.01 multiplied by minus 80 which further boils down to 2.20 so you can see new value of w2 weight is 2.20 this is how we have to calculate the new weights now let's try to calculate the new value for w0 pause the video and calculate the new weight of w0 now let's start calculating the new weight of w0 so you can see the formula remains the same here instead of writing x we'll write x0 now what is the value of x0 if you remember x0 is the virtual input whose value is always initiated to 1 hence x0 value will be 1 so now you have to fill all the values and then calculate the final value you can see the expression after calculation boils down to 4 minus 0.01 which is nothing but 3.99 so you can see that the new value of w0 is 3.99 so i hope the entire process of calculating the new weights is clear to you all now here we had only two input features x1 and x2 as well as we also had the bias term hence we had to calculate three weights similarly if you have n input features then you will have to calculate n plus 1 weights now this was for only one iteration similarly we have to do it for all the data points as well as we have to repeat this process for specified number of epochs now that we have seen everything related to perceptron now it's time to jot down all the points that we have discussed in the previous three videos to frame a perfect algorithm for perceptron we will have to specify this particular step that perceptron will continue its iterations for a specified number of epochs epochs are nothing but the iterations or in short we can say we will continue the process of it iterating over all the data points until we find the model convergence so i hope this first step is clear we will continue iterating all over the data points till we face a situation where the model cannot improve itself even if more training is provided to it now under each epoch we will try to iterate over each and every data point now every single data point will have its features which is represented by xi and it will also have its label which is output which is represented by yi so we will iterate over each and every data point and for each data point we will compute three things first is the summation value as we know the summation value is nothing but the weighted sum of the inputs here let's say we have n inputs then we can find out the summation by simply using this formula w0x0 plus w1x1 plus w2x2 so on and so forth till wn xn from this particular formula we can find out the summation once we find out the summation value we can then apply the activation function which is the next step in this step you can use any activation function but for now we can use step function so here using step function over that particular summation value will give us the prediction which is nothing but y pred in this particular variable y pred we will store the prediction of that particular data point according to the current weights that is w0 w1 w2 so on till wn once we calculate the y pred we'll have to check whether this y pred is correct that means the classification is correct or it is not we can get it by this particular condition that we'll check whether yi that means the actual output is equal to the predicted output or not if it is equal that means the classification is correct but if the actual output and the predicted output are not same in that particular situation we will have to update the weights in such a way that it won't be a misclassification now the logic for updating the weights will write it inside this particular condition as we know we have to update each and every weight so for each weight wi and each input xi we have this particular formula 
you can see we can write this particular formula as wi equals to wi which is the older weight plus nita multiplied by yi minus y pred which is the predicted output multiplied by xi which is nothing but the feature input which is associated with that particular wi weight with the help of this particular formula the new weights will be updated and those weights will be used for the next data point once the training of all the data points is done it will be called as one epoch and such epochs will be continuously iterated unless and until the model convergence is found out and this is how a perceptron algorithm looks like so you can see we have built the entire algorithm of perceptron by simply applying the logics that we have learnt till now from previous two videos related to perceptron drop your comments if you have any single doubt also post your reviews and suggestions for more such videos do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on instagram don't forget to connect me on telegram also